Hello, welcome to an Inbox Zero flowchart. I get so nerdy about Inbox Zero. I actually love it. It seems like something that I shouldn't like, but I actually really love it. So this is gonna be a step-by-step flowchart of when you receive an email, what to do with it, and it's very simple. It's just three simple questions to ask yourself. Um, but it was all spawned when I was a teacher during COVID, and during that time we were getting tons of emails, doing online schooling, some of these emails would be really emotional, they'd be taxing, there'd be upset parents. And so I quickly realized how spending too much time on email was affecting my emotional state, it was affecting my productivity. And so I, I kind of sought out to find a better way to deal with emails. So when I started out, there's some typical advice you'll typically hear about email, email management. One is only check it once or twice a day, which I have found to be incredible advice. advice. Definitely follow that especially check email when you're not at your best. So for example, I am very productive in the mornings and when I would go straight into work and during my most productive hours, if I'm spending it checking email, that was not a good use of my time. So I eventually switched over to checking it at 1 p.m. because that's when I'm kind of lethargic or kind of winding down. So pick one or two times a day to check it and don't do it during your optimum periods. The other piece of advice that you'll hear about email management is they'll have extensive folder systems and everyone does it a little bit differently. Some people will say, okay, you need a folder depending on who sent it. So you could have a folder for parent emails, a folder for principal emails, a folder for student emails, da 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 da. And that just was not effective to me because I found when I needed an old email, I'm not gonna say, okay, my principal sent this to me. Let me go in the principal's folder and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. No, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type it in in the search bar because the email search function is so good anyways that I'm not even gonna go into those folders. The second folder system that people recommend, sometimes they might have like a capture location, a, a will need later lo location, act on it now location, and they do it by how you're going to act on it. But when you create more folders like that, that is instead of minimizing your work or minimizing the complexity, you're now just basically creating more inboxes. You have your main inbox and now you've just sorted it into these other boxes that you need to check. And then your brain doesn't feel relaxed because like, did I check here? Did I check here? When you give your brain, you know, like 18 different places to check, then it feels like I haven't checked everywhere. So ultimately, folders become second inboxes, they don't become a solution. So that is where this flowchart comes in and it's very easy and I will have different screen recordings over me so you can actually see what the laptop is doing as well. So when you get an email, instead of sorting it by sender or other different categories, we are going to sort it reference to us. We are going to say, when am I going to act on this? And there are three options for that. Option one is never. You are never going to need to act on this. This happened to me a lot at school. I would get a group email from the principal. It's sent to 60 people. Absolutely none of the information is relevant to me. I don't need it. What I do in this case is I put it in a folder called reference. There's an off chance I might need it. So I never really delete emails because the search function is so good and I just want to, you know, for safekeeping. So I have one folder that's called reference. Now, what I want to say is this system can be used even if you have thousands of emails. So for example, I've got my childhood email. I got it when I was in middle school. I think there's like 54,000 emails in there. If I wanted to take that email and <laughs> streamline it and make it good for inbox zero, I would select all of those emails, all 54,000 of them, and I would put them in this reference folder. Or if you wanted to, you could create a folder like pre-August 2025 or whenever it is you're embarking on this. Take a quick peruse, do I need anything? Probably not, you probably don't. Maybe you do, is there anything you need to act on? If there is something you need to act on, we'll address it here. But if you don't need to act on it, because you probably don't, that's why it's all just sitting in there, thousands of emails, just go ahead and drag it. And now boom, you're starting at the beginning, clean slate, you've got inbox zero right now. The next option is you need to act on it now. So twice a day, you're checking your emails, someone asks you a question, you answer it, boom, it's gone, take that email, put it in reference. So if you're gonna act on it now, respond to them, take action, do whatever you need to do, and then put it in reference. The next option is you'll take action on the email later. And this is where what a lot of people do that's like, okay, well, I don't wanna move this. I, I'll just keep it unread or something. I, I'll need it later and it just sits in your main inbox. But there will be tons of things. Many, many emails will be in the need later category. An example of this is my principal might say, okay, you're gonna be, <laughs> Uh, standardized testing proctor in three months. This is the password that you're gonna need. So I do need it. I will take action. I need to get the password and input it in the proctor system or whatever at some point. 
but I don't need it right now. And in the meantime, in the next three months, I don't want it to just be sitting there. So if you'll need it later, in this case, I need it in the next three months. The first step is you need to determine when is later. So for me, it's in three months, so I might get an exact date. Okay, that's November 15th or whenever that is. So you'll define when is later. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna snooze that and send it to yourself later. So if I, I don't need it till November 15th, I'll snooze it till maybe you wanna give yourself a little leeway like November 14th or whenever it is, but you're gonna snooze it and send it to yourself later. So it'll be in your inbox when you do need it. Now, because we clicked on it, it's marked as unread. So when it snoozes and it appears back in your email in a few months from now, it's gonna be unread. So what I like to do is first mark it, change it to be marked as read, and then snooze it for later. So I wanna give a few examples of a few example emails I get and how I would react to them. Some of the emails I'm gonna be getting are spam. So in the case of spam, I need to act on it now, and the action is I need to unsubscribe from it. So I'll scroll to the bottom of the email, typically in very small letters, it says unsubscribe, click unsubscribe, and that is the action. In the case of spam, instead of reference, I will actually delete it. Um, another example, when I was teaching, I might have a parent of a student reach out and say, hey, we're thinking of transferring him to a different math class, but we don't wanna do it right away. Can you email us in a month updating us on his progress? So that's a situation where I have an action item, I need to email them back but it's later, it's in a month. So what I'll do is in that email where they requested that I email them in a month, I'll mark that unread and then I'll snooze it for a month from now. And that'll show up in my inbox a month from now and that'll be the trigger so I remember to respond to them. Um, another example is I might have the principal, he sends out a group message to you know 70 of us. It's a huge email, paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs. It's like a monthly update. There's tons of stuff in there. The vast majority of it I do not need, but hidden in there, there's one little thing that I'm gonna need a month from now. Maybe it's a password for something, you know, a passcode to the door, whatever it is. There's something important in there that I do need, but I'll need it a month from now. I don't want to just snooze that and send it to myself because future me is not gonna be happy to read that entire email all over again. So in the case of very long emails, what I might do is just compose a new email to myself. I might say, Alexis, okay, a month from now, you're gonna need this password and I will schedule send that. Ske schedule send and snoozing are two very similar functions. They both, you know, they're the futuristic later things. So when it's from myself, I'll just schedule send it for a month from now. So it'll show up in my inbox from me a month from now, but it'll be much more concise. <laughs> it'll just be that one sentence that I need. Another example from teaching is maybe I have a colleague who says, hey, so-and-so's parent sent us their test scores in a group message a couple months ago. Um, can you get those for me? That'd be an instance where it's good that I kept it in reference so that it's not completely deleted forever. Now, I don't actually go into the folder. I will just go up in the search bar and I'll type in whatever the keywords are and kind of scan through there that way. So this is my Inbox Zero flowchart. I am completely nerd out about it. I hope you loved it as much as I do. Um, I have coaching calls. I will link those in the description. If you have some sort of system that you need help setting up that I have not gone into in my system series, um, I've got a planner, I sell a journal. Those are different systems that I have talked about in other videos, but check out my playlist for systems. If you're interested in that, book a call with me. If you're interested in that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.